What's up, what's up, y'all? I'm Mike Spencer, your black cultural taste maker. What's going on, everybody? It's your girl, the Jasmine Alanis, and don't forget to be because there's only one me, and this is the, the Triangle Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I was to say this. You always do that. Uh, he, he, he didn't say nothing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I saw him like this. But... <laughs> I was about to act like I said something. I was about to say the true podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the true podcast. <laughs> right, oh, right, right. Right. Okay. All right. You ready? Was that second one the true? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> we good. We good now. Take it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is Be the God, B G E N T, and you're tuned in to Triangle Podcast. What's up, what's up, y'all? I'm Mike Spencer, your black cultural tastemaker. And what's going on, everybody? It's your girl, the Jasmine Alanis, and don't forget to be because there's only one me. And this is the, the Triangle, Triangle Podcast. Podcast. Only your story, our story, and the truth. That's right. So today we got Be the God, my big brother. He also was, our first guest. For sure, for sure. And of course you had to start off with family. Um, talking about how families can make for better opportunity, make for better opportunities in their life, make a better way, generational wealth. Mm-hmm. And what better way to do that than to talk to your brother about what it is to start a business. So before we get into that, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, you know, I go about be the God. Um, a lot of people always ask me about my name, you know, and everything like that. I mean, honestly, it speaks for itself. Be the God, you know, be you, be true to yourself. Come be on, be king. God. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Up for that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and um, one of one of the main things that I really go by um, when I had, I used to listen to Nas a lot. And one thing that really stood out to me was the same blood of a slave, heart of a king. Mm. You know, so I always, I always stuck by that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, basically, you know, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, um, East New York, to be precise. Um, you know, moved down to North Carolina. Obviously, we had to get out the hood when we was at and stuff like that. You know, my mother, she just didn't see, you know, a good life for me and my other siblings. So we moved down, and I mean, no complaints. You know what I'm saying? We here now. So you're a Carolina boy now. Yeah, that sounds like Yeah, yeah, like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, basically, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, New York is always going to be home. You That's right. You still got that little accent in your voice. Like, you can tell you're not really from here, but you got <laughs> best of both worlds. Yeah. You got best yeah. of both worlds. Okay, so what are you doing now? What are you, what's your profession? So my profession right now, um, I am in the military, you know, right now. But appreciate um, your service. Thank yes, you. sir. Thank you. But <laughs> besides that, I actually own a business. Mm. Um, I partnered up with a longtime friend for about, we've been friends since what, for about 12 years. Mm. About 12 years, and we decided to yeah. get into it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a friend. You know, I just love your relationship. Woo! That's your friend. That's family. That ain't even friend. That's yeah, friend. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah basically, you know, he's like my brother. You know, Michael knows him. Um, and he's also, he's actually a rapper, battle rapper. Okay. It's actually really good. It's crazy. But, um, mm-hmm. anyway, Go ahead and shout him out yeah, one time. Nah, he is. You need to plug him in right hey, here. Yo, shout out at Chris London SPX on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Okay. Follow him. Um, all the information is going to be there for you on this bio. Um, also, follow the link. We got um, his. He has a, a new single out called uh, London Style. You can download that on Apple Music. Actually, all streaming platforms. Mm. London Style, take one. Yeah. You know, Come rapper on Chris London. London. Remember that. Chris London is the rapper. Mm. Um, you might have to plug his music. Yeah, we, yeah for sure. For sure. Yeah, man, yeah. For real. Like, do we deserve it, man. So, tell us a little bit more about the business that you guys have together. So, we uh, we run a sneaker business called Sneaker Pilot Exchange. Okay. Um, INC, you know. It is, we started this off last year, um, June of 2019. That's when we made it official. Okay. Um, and we just decided, you know what I'm saying? Cause he, you know, we were all going through some, you know, some things. We needed some extra cash and we were trying to figure out certain things. He's been doing this for a while before me. And he called me one day and was like, yo, I need you to, you know, invest in this business with sneakers. At first, I was just like, eh, I don't know. Because mm-hmm. you know how people are with sneakers and everything yeah. like that. Yeah. It wasn't that I wasn't sure about what I knew about sneakers, but I, at the time, I just didn't want to deal with people and 
you know, everybody Hitting bashing you. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. you know, everybody has their own opinion. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I got over that. You know, I I um, attacked my fears head on. And, you know, now we're here two years strong, actually. Um, and it's just, I just, it was crazy because the first couple of days, no, the first couple of weeks, I was getting no sales. Mm-hmm. Wow. One okay. sale, like, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. And then one day, you know, one person hit me up. Yeah. And he told somebody else. Okay. That person told somebody else. Word of, mouth. Word of mouth. Word of mouth marketing. Like, so, so talk about that fear that you just had said earlier, because I know a lot of fear is what keeps a lot of people, people from starting, starting a business. Yeah. And then even after fear, you you still started. So talk about the fear that you had. And then even when you started, you said you had no sales. Right. So what, what was the motivation behind you not giving up after you decided to start? Well, first, my fear was um, just not being successful. You know, I may not, I may fail like this. I may be bad at selling shoes. Like that was just my thing. And right. at the end of the day, I kind of realized that, you know, you, I mean, you have to tackle your fears head on because if you don't, I mean, you're always going to stay at the bottom. And that's just how I thought about it. That's mm-hmm. always how I think. So I just decided to run with it. Yeah. And I mean, it was a good thing that I did run with it because mm-hmm. uh, now we're making I'm not gonna say how much money right. we're making the money, right. but, it's, that hush hush, yeah. but it's doing good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, but it's there, you know, and it's 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 rewarding, man. It's 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 so great. Like I can't. Oh man, y'all can't thank this man enough, for real, man. I cannot thank this man enough. Like it's it's just been like the best two years of my life. That's good. That's all I can really say. Even with everything that's happening, no sales. I'm sure y'all had. Maybe some disagreements, <laughs> being business partners or not. Um, just just the business aspect and going in there kind of blindsided. I don't, I'm not saying that you guys don't know how to run a business, but mm-hmm. it was your first business, yeah. so it's a lot you have to learn. Yeah. So talk about talk about that process and learn as you go, because me and Mike talk about that all the time. Yeah. It's like the podcast. And what and and before you before you answer that, right? Like, because when you're starting a business, especially when you start a business by yourself, you don't have to worry as much as about paperwork. But when you're starting with somebody else, talk about what it is to like maybe the legal aspect. Because I, I, I'm yeah. I noticed y'all yeah. like LLC, mm-hmm. so yeah. talk about what that was like figuring out how to get an LLC and and all those things. Mm-hmm. So so you have an LLC, INC, they're both the same thing. Mm-hmm. What I found out that almost the same thing. I think um, INC is probably a few dollars more. Mm-hmm. Um, you have you have. Uh, it was a lot of things that I learned, like C core, S core. I didn't mm. even know all that stuff. Mm, mm. Um, I had a uh, we have our accountant um, that uh, resides in Fayetteville, mm. and she she's actually a professor at uh, Fayetteville Tech Community College. Oh wow! You know, just awesome lady. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. Shout yeah. out Miss T. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So she she we, we were talking about businesses and all this other stuff. She runs her own business on top of her own accounting business. Wow. Okay. And she had like she has a whole staff and everything. It's crazy. That's dope. Yeah. She like Come she on, does Ms. everything. Yeah. yeah Miss T. Right here. Too. Is Miss T a black lady? Yes, she is. That's that's Shout out that's 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 Yeah. Actually, yeah. Remember, um, in Fayetteville is Ace Management Group. Okay, that's the name of it. Ace Management Group. Yes. Ace Management Group in Fayetteville. She's awesome. She knows a lot. Like she does a lot of uh, research. That's what's up. She knows a lot. But she basically put me on. You know, she was like, "You need to, um, you need to file for um, INC LLC. Like you have to make it official. You can't keep running around with the name because of what what happened. Somebody will steal the name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then by the time." Two, three years later, you want to make it official, somebody has the name. Yes. Yeah. You know, so I made sure, like, it was literally within two days, uh, I spoke with my partner, my business partner, and I was like, yo, we need to put the money up for this. Um, it it was a it was a couple hundred dollars. You I was going to say, that's not about yeah, the cost. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 what's it cost for so, the I mean, it depends. Um, I'm going to just say, like, around, I think it was, like, three Probably about three, three fifty, something like that. Maybe twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember. It was somewhere around that ballpark. Mm-hmm. And but that's also with her services, and she's doing all the paperwork. Okay. You know? So obviously, some of the proceeds go to her and her staff as well. Right. Um. She does all the paper. She did all the paperwork for me, but she was going through everything. You know. Um. When your partner, when you're partnering up with someone, it's basically split fifty yeah. fifty. You don't have to. You can split. You know, like that, but we decided to do 50 50. And the thing about it is, we never had a disagreement. We've never had a disagreement because we, well, that's good. 
Yeah, yeah, we understand each other, you know, but we literally sit and talk about decisions we make and what we're thinking together, about. Together, yeah. Exactly. See, Jazz and I, um, and not to go too much into what happened, but Jazz and I had somebody that wanted to um, kind of get a slot in our podcast, mm-hmm. um, a weekly slot. And so mm-hmm. I remember one of the things that, one thing that Jazz and I do, we always consult about whatever, mm-hmm. right? So of course, even you being my brother, mm-hmm. I still said Jazz like, hey, what do you think about this? Here's the idea. And we present our, you know, our argument per se to each yeah. other about what what it is because you want nobody's in your mind. So you have to have that opportunity to put somebody in, in the same place that you're in the same shoes so that they can yeah. see your side. Definitely. So, um, we ultimately came to the conclusion that somebody wasn't just going to get a free slide on something that we yeah. build. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but one thing about your business, how does that work? Do you, um, let's say somebody say, hey, I want to go ahead and, and start selling sneakers too. I see you being successful. What is that process like in terms of bringing somebody on? So basically, we kind of treat them as a shareholder because we want them to feel important too as well. You okay. Know, we want them to make money. Obviously, we're going to make our money, mm-hmm. you know, but they're going to make a fair share, like okay. a really, really fair share. We're, you know, we're not stingy or anything like that. Um, we do have a few people, we have a lot of people actually selling sneakers for us and stuff okay. like that. Um, but basically what it is, you know, some people, they the inbox you or DM you on Instagram or Facebook mm-hmm. and like, yo, what are you selling? Mm-hmm. How can I start selling? I'm trying to make, you know, some extra money. I'm tired of working these nine to fives, 16 hours, 18 hours, stuff like that. Like we get all these stories all the time. Right. Okay. And, and, you know, we, we have a system um, in play um, that we do and we send it to them. They read it. And then we have like a phone conversation for about half an hour. And we basically tell them, you know, this is what's going to happen. Um, you either have two options, you know, you can, what we really try to tell people is invest in stock. You want to have stock on hand especially when there's new releases. You don't have to have a full size run, but have a few pairs, you know, to, to see what kind of system, you know, works better for you, yeah, yeah. you know, um, but still follow what we're telling you because we, we, we show people how to promote on Instagram, Facebook, um, that's, you know, promote ads, pictures, whatever, videos, do all that stuff. Um, kind of teach you how to talk to people or approach people when they ask about shoes. Um, like you have a lot of people asking a lot of questions, especially because we don't have that credibility like Foot Locker, Finish on Chance. Right, right. A lot of people are more skeptical, you know, uh, skeptical. Are these real? Are yeah, 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 like yeah, 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 exactly. And the thing about it is me and um, Chris London, SPX, uh, my boy Chris, we've learned over the years how to um, authenticate sneakers, what to look for, what these sneakers are supposed to look like, mm. you know, the stitching, the material, mm. like everything, you know, um, from the stitching inside the soles. Like there's a lot of things. And that's what a lot of these companies do, these buy sell trade stores. They do the same thing. You got you have to learn, you have to read every day all the sneaker apps. You know what I'm saying? You have to look at those every day. You got to see what's what, what's out, the changes, because Every every day is always a change. That goes back to the importance of loving what you what you're doing, what, you're doing, what type yeah. of business you want to start. Do yeah. you think that's a key asset? So like like me and Mike were saying, discussing last week when we had our last um podcast, we were going through the five things that are most important when you're starting a business, mm-hmm. podcast, whatever you want to do. Right. So with that being said, should your one, we said your heart should be all in it. Because, you know, you have people who are probably coming to you because they want to make money. It's not right. that they really like sneakers, sneakers but it's yeah, because right. they, they want to make money. And a few people can do that, you know what I'm saying? But most people have to have their heart in So talk a little bit about, you know, your love for sneakers and how you need to have that love to, to, to start a business even when it gets hard. So, yeah. I mean, it can go both ways. I say yes and no. Um, you, technically, you don't have to have a love for it. That's just like saying somebody... Like working a nine to five, do they have to have a love, mm. you know, for working a nine to five? Like, no, they, they have to do it. You know, mm-hmm. they, they got to get up, get to work because they want to pay their bills. They want to mm-hmm. be able to provide for their family themselves. So I kind of, people kind of look at it like that, even though they have a nine to five where they're working at a retail store or anything like that, you know, they, you kind of, kind of build up to it you, and, and you talk yourself into it. Like, I need to make this money. And if this is what's going to make that extra, you know, two, three hundred dollars, then it is what it is. And I'm gonna have to learn about these shoes and stuff like that in order to um to be successful. And what what, what in, ends up happening is everybody isn't successful in it. Um because people they 
they lose that motivation. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, they they go through that emotional roller coaster. They, you start up here, and once they get down here, mm-hmm. it's hard for them to, to, to keep up. that going. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So they, some of them just just give up. But you have some people that they get it after a while. Like yeah. something just clicks in their head, and then they're like, "Yo, like it's, it's like it's working now." You right, know what I'm right, saying? right. But um, like I, I just tell people, just you, you you have your sources. You have all these sneaker apps. Like you can look up any sneakers from Yeezys to Jordans to Nikes and see how they're supposed to be made, where they're made, with what material, the stitch, how, how many stitches are in the shoe. You know, you do your research like that, you take about an hour a day, matter of fact, 30 minutes a day, mm-hmm. and just do your research on sneakers every mm-hmm. day, and you'll start to build the knowledge. Mm-hmm. And the more knowledge you build, you'll become more confident. The more confident you become, then like it just takes off from there. Absolutely. You know? But behind that, like you said, you can be, you can want to do it if you teach yourself. But for you to teach yourself, keyword, you have to have that motivation. So that's what I was asking. Like, it's one thing to work. Like you said, you're working a nine to five. You're doing it because you have to. Right. But if I'm going to start a business. Mm. Should it be something that I really enjoy doing? Really good you know question. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, would you have started a sneaker business? You and your uh, your friend Chris. Have you guys not really had an interest in sneakers? Yeah, no. no. Right. Really <laughs> right. So, so yeah, let's talk like, about the importance of that. It's the I feel like you know the importance of that. Um, oh yeah, you do. If, <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna start, if you're gonna start your own business, yes. like yes, I feel like you have to have a love for whatever it is: mm-hmm. art, music, sneakers, clothes, because you like you. You enjoy every aspect of it. You never get bored. Right. You know, right. People will get bored of something they don't want to do. Mm-hmm. Right. Frustrated. You don't want to go to work no more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, yeah, that's a great yeah, point. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and you're, you're easily willing to quit when you yeah, don't love oh something. Oh my gosh, man. You stop. Every day you feel like I quit. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But like you said, when you guys weren't selling shoes because you guys had that love for shoes and because you believed so much in the business that you were starting, you're like, okay, we're going to take this with a grain of salt. We're still going to promote. We're still going to do this. And luckily, you guys came across that person you said who introduced you to other people and then your business started thriving. But had you given up, yeah, yeah, we, we that would not have been right. Exactly. You know? So now... I know. Okay, so so you, you got over the hump, right? Mm-hmm. You got out. You got over the fear, <laughs> right? But one, I was reading a book. It's by. Uh, it's called E Myth, which is the entrepreneurship myth, right? And in the first chapter, the author talks about there's three people that are within us, right? And in psychology, you got your id, your ego, and all that. And the three people he talks about, I, I classified it like this: you got your visionary, you've got your organizer. And then you've got your executor. So your executor is like that technician, your employee, that day-to-day person that's just like, we need to do this right now because we don't need to focus on anything else. Then you got that visionary who's always like, man, there's this new product we should introduce in our business, and this is going to make us go X, Y, Z. And then you got that person in the middle who's just kind of like, well, you're introducing this thing. Now I got to figure out how to organize this so everything is consistent. Yeah. But the key yeah. is, is all three of those people are functioning at the same time. Yeah. So how have you been able to manage that part to, to, to stay consistent and kind of be successful? Uh, I mean, will. You have to have that will. Like I'm talking about, like even when I'm working my nine to five, mm-hmm. you know, in between, like I'll take about, couple minutes you know i always have people inboxing me and stuff like that and the thing about it is it does get crazy when you have a lot of people Mm -hmm. just jumping in your dms and inbox asking questions when buy shoes you know the uh the money is coming through you know your merchant service you know from from the sites of the merchant service to you know the uh the account and everything like that mm. and then it basically like what it does is it lists like the person because they have to fill out information the person's name information all that stuff and it shows what they said mm. so, yeah, so it's wow. a system right. to help you and that's what we go by um we go by that and it does get overwhelming sometimes because it's so so many orders and some people what they do is you you'll put in an order and some people change their minds mm. like that and oh, wow. by the time they change their mind, it's, it's, it's been two or three days. Oh, yeah. we, we already shipped. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. they're like, oh, well, can I send it back? Like, that gets frustrating. I'm not going to lie. Sure. Yeah. It gets yeah. frustrating because it happens a lot. But 
I mean, we're, you know, we're always willing to give people refunds, you know, if need be. I'm not just, we're not just going to give you a refund, you know what I'm saying? Because um, we feel like, we feel like a lot of people, what, what has happened one time, um, somebody actually finessed us. Were, like, they were smart. Mm-hmm. So, so that. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> so, so we, sent them, we sent them some shoes and we didn't hear from them for three months. Three months. And then come comes back. And this dude been he's been wearing the shoes because when we got it back, we I'm sure it's like three we months. Saw it, yeah, we saw it and stuff like that. Um and he was like, Yeah, he was like, Something wrong with these shoes. And we was like, What's wrong, what's wrong with it? He was like, you know, he he um talked about a feature. We was like, Well, that's how it's supposed to be. Like we know what yeah, we're talking yeah, about. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. And, and, and you can look online and it, right. it, it says it verbatim, like that issue that he was talking about. Oh, wow. Um, and we was like, that's all retail stores. Like it's all, all of them are like that. Like it wasn't nothing big at all. But that's how I knew he was trying to find an excuse to. Well, I'm not gonna say excuse because I don't know what problems he had going on. Mm-hmm. He was probably just trying to sell it back to us. Yeah, like, right, to get his money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, we was like, okay, um, you know, send the shoes back. And he was like, all right, cool. We gave him the address. What our, our mistake we did was we gave him the money first before we sent the before getting the shoes back. Cause you know, so we got the shoes back in, you know, about two days, two, three days. And we opened the box. First of all, the box wasn't even the box that we sent them. Oh, wow. And then we opened it and it was a different shoe. We was just like, Bro, well, we was like, yo, this dude is crazy. <laughs> you know, yeah, like we calling him, we calling him. He, you know, he, he not answering. He deleted his Instagram, of Facebook. He did. Wow. Everything. Of course like, he did. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, we ain't doing that again. Yeah, it was crazy, but um, and that's that when, had to be a huge yeah, lesson learned. Yes, and that's when we started to really implement a system. Mm. Yeah. How we do refunds. Mm. I'm not saying we're not gonna give people refunds, but you know, we we found a new way. You know, as to to how to give uh, refunds to people, mm. um, when to give refunds to people. Mm. You know, because it's always a good and bad time to do all that. But stuff. that goes to show, as a business owner, you live and you learn when you're. When yes, you're right. Because <laughs> that was a bit. Had you not, had you not, had Born that happened to you, yeah. you wouldn't have a refund uh, yeah. policy. Policy, yeah, yeah. And that 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 helped that's, that's, <laughs> in a in a bad way. <laughs> that's, that's when the refund policy came out. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it, like it's okay to not. I think people don't start businesses for one because they feel like I don't know everything I need right. to know, so I'm not going to start it. I don't want to be screwed over. But it's it's really those situations where you do get screwed over or where something does something bad does happen mm-hmm. for you to be a better business owner and to know that you're not going to allow certain things or maybe I need to put this policy in place because yeah. this did happen. Just to learn the business better. Absolutely, yes. definitely, definitely. So now, uh, now you got me in this place. <laughs> <laughs> now let's say, and, and thank God this didn't happen for the, anybody that is spiritual. I am spiritual, so thank God this did happen. Not talking about be the guy, but thank God. <laughs> <laughs> let's say that you had no sales come in mm. for five, ten months. At what point do you say this isn't the business for me, and I move on to something else? Because I, as you know, most businesses fail within their first five years. Mm-hmm. Then that next that next five years, another half of those businesses fail, and then right after that. <laughs> but not only that, but situations yeah. like we're in right now, where people are prioritizing Correct. exactly, yes. and, and so are, are, are sneakers a new right need need based mm-hmm. business right now? I mean, what does that look like? Yeah. Sneakers isn't a need based business, but we know people love brands, right? Yeah. People like brands are never going to go anywhere. People, mm-hmm. right? Everybody wants to look nice. Mm-hmm. Everybody will do. I'm not gonna say they will do everything to look nice, but they're mm-hmm. gonna do what they can. Okay. If somebody has the money, if if, if they know their bills are paid and they have this extra money to buy these sneakers because they they wanted them for so long and then they have extra money to spend, they're gonna do that. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so somebody's gonna do it. You mm-hmm. know. But um, to answer your question. I feel like, so yeah, so say I didn't sell anything for six months. In my mind, I'm doing something wrong. Okay. You know, I like, we need a new system. Tear everything up, <laughs> like, go back to the drawing board, you know, and, 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 and just restart. Okay. Meaning, okay, how are we, how are we approaching these people? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're, we're like, where are we going to target um, certain, you know, demographics and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Who are, do we need to pass out business cards? Mm-hmm. Do we need to, 
uh, kind of tweak how we promote on Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know, like you like you got to use a different approach. And you, like you have to keep reinventing yourself sometimes. It doesn't necessarily. That's just like um, what's his name? Jeff Bowles, the the um, Be Bezos. Jeff Jeff Bezos. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, the the creator of Amazon. Yeah. Uh, I remember your dad showed me a picture. Like we was like 16, 17. Yeah, 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 yeah. He used, yo, he used to make his dad used to make us read some crazy at the time. Yeah, it was just some crazy, crazy books. books. Like, we be reading that like boys. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, what? yo, why am I reading yeah. about Kevin Lyle? Yo, was yeah, like, yeah, we was like, oh my god. <laughs> god. <laughs> Asada Shakur, reading about Marcus Dog. Yeah. So, yeah, like, uh, like, I mean, mean, yeah, and one of the books he gave me was The Destruction of the Black Civilization. Yo, when I read that book mm. at 13, I was like, I don't understand these words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I was so confused. But right. As I got older, I started to understand. I was like, yo, I'm glad he made us read all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And that was probably your first test in reinventing yourself yeah, like, what that looks right, like. Because you never, one thing that these books, Especially that Kevin Lyle's book, it told us to never give up. Fact, yeah, like, yeah. Never give up. Like if, if something goes wrong, there's, there's always another path. There's always yeah. other paths that you can take. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Whichever one you take is gonna be the right one soon. But you know, like we say, people give up in the middle of a race. Because mm. you know, you know, there's there's that you know that quick saying, mm. and they don't know how to get out. Mm. They're struggling. The more you struggle. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me not say the more frustrated you are, you're gonna struggle even more, mm. and then you're gonna sink. You know, mm. sometimes you have to really, you know, take a breather and collect your thoughts. You know, and um, you know, do, do more research, read more books, learn how to market. You know, there, there's a lot of books out there to learn oh, how to market wow. and what to do and how to build a business. And you have to do something that fits you and your product. Mm. That's another thing. You know. Um, so. Basically, how to market your product, what you're selling, and stuff like that. It's, it's to me, I mean, that's a big thing. That's, that's really big. So, word of mouth, um, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Word of mouth um, really helped you explode, I guess, as a business, but you keep mentioning social media mm -hmm. marketing as well. Exactly yeah. And so, talk about that. What does that look like? Like, how, I mean, you don't have to give away all your secrets because you might want to host a course on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the seminar, you know. Yeah, yeah. What does, what does promotion look like for you guys and what works best for you guys um we we usually like our most used social media um app that we use is instagram we promote more on instagram um we can promote on facebook we just choose to promote on instagram because i don't know for some reason we realize we can reach more people on instagram because you have those hashtags right those hashtags are like really 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 big because it reaches mm -hmm. out to millions of people billions of people in the world right everywhere you can hashtag germany you can hashtag um south america right and, and, and it's going to spread to different people in south america germany canada and the united states you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying um and it's just like we um i remember the first time i didn't know how to promote anything okay. i didn't know anything about it can be hard yeah because I, I was like i was like where do i start do i just what I was doing was I was just posting on Facebook, right? I'll, I'll post a sneaker, <laughs> and it'll just be the sneaker. <laughs> it'll just be the sneaker, <laughs> and then like no caption, no nothing, and then like people would be like, "Okay, I was okay. getting no yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm just like, I'm just like, yo, like, don't you see this? this yeah, like, yeah, 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 like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like, I'll wake up in the morning, I will have one like, <laughs> and, and, and it'll be for my mom. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was like, oh nah, like, like something gotta give. And um I think I was reading a book. Uh what was I reading? Not not Tony Robbins, Seven Steps to Success. Um uh, I forgot what I, I was reading somebody's book. And it was basically saying like you have to, you know, you have to get out there, you know, mm -hmm. um, explain your product, tell tell them what you, what the product is, the name, you know what I'm saying? If it if, if, if it's pencils. The why, yeah, why you need, right. why you need, need to buy from exactly. me, and not yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a number two pencil. Like That's someone's right. gonna work on the Scantron, even though you have Scantron yeah, no more. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know stuff like that. So you know, I I started to you know implement um, what what I was reading, and mm -hmm. it went from just posting the picture to posting the picture and putting the caption for sale to. Um, you know, Nike Air Max ninety seven and the name of the shoe, the size and. 
you gotta really be creative because you gotta really draw people with your creativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and like the the the, the font yeah. and all the emojis and stuff like that. That'll draw people out and just how you structure it. The, yeah. the important thing to me is how you structure yeah. the, the the caption. Mm. You do that correctly, and, it's, and, and 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 it looks professional, and mm-hmm. people are gonna come to you. Mm-hmm. You know, and then it goes from a random person in Philadelphia. He um, he messages you. Yo, you got 11 and a half and so and so. Got you. Can you send pictures? Uh, we have a website. Um, actually, and it's Plug Talk Kicks. That's P L U G T A L. Oh, I'm sorry. T A L K K I C K Z dot com. So that's Plug Kick Talks dot com. Uh, Plug Talk Kicks. I'm sorry. Um, so you can go on that website and that's what, that's where we direct people and they can see all the pictures, the prices and everything. We have our policies. Our frequent asked questions and a lot of this stuff. So we direct them there. And they're like, all right, cool. They get an order, comes in, and then you know they 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 they'll, they'll, they'll inbox us like, yo, like yo, these are straight. I'm 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 out. I'm gonna purchase from you next week. I'm gonna keep purchasing from you. And then it goes from them telling their sisters, mm-hmm. their sisters telling their friends, mm-hmm. and then just like it explodes. It flows, yeah. Like it's crazy. So that's really how social media and you know word of mouth marketing works. Mm-hmm. So the importance of you are a business, but you also are a black owned business. Mm, yeah. So, and a lot of people, <laughs> let's get into that because a lot of people, one, won't support black businesses because they automatically think there's no, there's a lack of professionalism. Yeah. I have dealt with black owned businesses mm, like mm. that before. And Just you know, we're, we're, we do that to each other. Yeah. So, explain the importance of maintaining professionalism as a black owned business um, that way. And like you said, the structure of your of your Instagram posts and things like that and yeah. just maintaining that professionalism. Um, you know, just the importance of supporting owning black owned black owned business. Um, just it we really, really need to be consistent at um just supporting each other, period. Mm-hmm. Like we have to get out of that negative stigma that you know, these they don't know what they're doing. They're not professional enough. They're not professional enough. And I feel like it's really credi- uh, credibility. You know, like I said before, we're not the big corporation shoe stores. So we don't have that credibility to do these authentications mm-hmm. and to, to say, oh, these are real. These aren't fake. These are B grade. And that's really where it comes from because you've you've had these these um corporations that that has been around for years mm. you know and they they have all these white collar workers at the top these executives and ceos right. right you know to just throw in money and to me that's really where it comes like that, that, that's really where it all comes in money mm. we, like i'm not a millionaire you know what i'm saying yeah. i i don't make five hundred thousand dollars a year i yeah. wish <laughs> 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 like, you know, but for the right reasons but um it's just like money comes in play, you know, you I mean, you gotta have that bread to to really expand how you want to. Yeah. Um, and that's really where where it all falls down to, and that's what we can learn. Mm. Like you like you have to have that money, and that's why like we 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 um we try to be as professional as we can, also because we want to show other black people and other black businesses that we can do what they've been doing for so long. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we've been doing it too, you know, as well. But you know, obviously, over the years, they've gotten you know. Like Wall yeah. Street, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, a lot of, yeah, a lot they, of stuff. Yeah. They, 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 <laughs> there's a lot of, we, we see yeah. a lot of challenges. Oh, yeah, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of challenges. We see a lot of yeah. challenges, but I feel like we have to keep that, that barrier so we can show these other upcoming black businesses that it can be done, right? You know, so that's where that the professionalism plays, you know. Um, like we can all do it if I can do it, you can do it. That's what mm-hmm. we want to do. We want to show them you can do it too, and um. You know, don't don't be. I feel like a lot of black businesses they don't want to give up their secrets. You don't have to give up your secrets, yes, but exactly. you have to, you know, mentor it. Like, be a mentor to these young entrepreneurs, please. Because if we don't, then they're not going to have any guidance. And how are they supposed to know how to run a business mm-hmm. at the end of the day? Yep. And that's what we don't do right. as black businesses. The crab in the bucket mentality. Yes. Yeah, because it's yeah. not helping. You know? <laughs> One all. thing to that point um, is that. It could, I think it's it's a it's a 
cyclical. This all kind of works together, right? Like you, you can give away all the secrets that you have, but at the end of the day, somebody is not going to be able to duplicate what you did overnight right. because again, yeah. you have to get the word out there. People have to trust you. You have to understand what it takes to brand. You, there's so many factors. So I think a lot of times we're worried about people, about creating competition. Yes, that, yep. that actually yes. would benefit us anyway because Nike didn't say, "Oh, Adidas is here, so you know what? Let me close up shop." No, they kept competing. Jordan didn't stop either. It's about the identity that you have and recognizing that hey, there's billions of people in the world. I only need a dollar from a million people. If I do that, I have a million dollars. It's okay. This I'm not gonna get a billion people to buy my stuff. Like, it's not gonna happen. And I don't want a billion people to because I gotta produce a billion shoes. <laughs> Actually, two billion. You know. Yeah. So it's like that. Um, I think sometimes we, we worry about some of the wrong things. Um, yeah, no, we do. We, we we take we take competition the wrong way. Yeah. Honestly, like we attack each other when we're when we're competing, and mm -hmm. that that's like we shouldn't do that. You know, we should uplift each other. Mm -hmm. You know, tell each other, you know, keep your head up during bad days, during yeah. bad storms and stuff like that. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. Not a lot, at least. I'm not saying, you know, everybody, but, you know, there's a lot of, you know, those people out there. Yeah. And we just, I mean, we can't take competition as like a negative stigma, like, especially when it's another business or uh, I build a sneaker business here and there's another one across the street and where somebody goes in there and that person that owns that business is saying, oh, you're a sneaker product exchange or... You know this this other sneaker store like they don't like I wore some shoes there they you know they were high right. they want to fade but you know like you can't talk down to you know to other yeah. places especially I think it's important to really like if you're black and I'm black you know what's 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 the point of trying to put me out of business because you know that maybe maybe that one shoe wasn't up to par you know up to your expectations you know what I'm saying but that's why you come back we can sit down and have a I mean. We can be grown-ups about this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We can talk about it, talk about the problems, squash it, you know what I'm saying? And then move forward from there, mm -hmm. support each other. You got to right. realize, too, everybody, I'm not you, you're not me, you, you right, know what right, I'm right, saying? Right, so right. you're going to reach your people, you're still going to have your money, your yeah. business, I'm going to reach my people, we exactly. can still help each other. And example, exactly. with your shoe business, like you said, if there's a shoe store across the street, you may have shoes that they don't have, and they may right. have shoes that you don't have. That's right. Yeah, we yeah. don't have these shoes in stock or today, but across the street, well, Ray Ray, <laughs> you got his shoe store and he yeah. has no shoes in there, you yeah. know? Yeah. I don't get why people don't, don't understand. Do, so, so what are some things that a person can look for um, to determine? What, what's a good sneaker? Like, what is a good sneaker? Um, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I mean, we can go really do you know, easies, man. Like, it don't matter, 750s. There's just certain features, you know, in... And Yeezys that a lot of people look at and stuff like that, especially the seven hundreds, because there's 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 like one of the easiest ways a lot of people ask like how do I know it's real, you know, and does it because uh so the Yeezy seven hundreds actually has the deep like the Adidas logo like in the middle of the shoe, mm -hmm. but what, what what happens is it has to have like light reflects off of it, and that's the only way you'll you'll see the three stripes. A lot a lot of people didn't know that when they first came out. Um, you can, so you can put it in the, um, the easy shoe on, on the dark and you'll take a picture of it. And once it flashes, you'll see the three stripes and then you'll see like they have, um, like on the soles part, um, they reflect. There's like these two little, de depending on the, the easies you have, uh, you have the little, two little circles on the sole on the back, they reflect, you know, um, and there's a little part at the, the, the top of the shoe that reflects and stuff like that. Um, yeah, like in the insoles, the stitching, you can tell about how the stitching is, even the stitching outside of it, you can tell if it's sloppy or, you know, it's it's, it's just a lot of variation. Wow, you like, 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 no. Yeah, yeah you know your stuff, so you know some shoes. <laughs> you better go ahead and know you can get them from Be The God, yeah, SPX Exchange. Yeah, so go ahead and uh, shout yourself out one more time, shout your business out one more time before you add it. Absolutely, so this is Be The God, BG. Ent, that's my Instagram name. You can follow me there. Um, and you know, Sneaker Pilot Exchange Inc is the business. Definitely. Wait, I don't want them to go without asking this last question. Uh, so you brought some sneakers for us. 
I wish. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the question. I, I mean, so you have so much knowledge about the sneakers, and before we go, I gotta ask: Do you see yourself creating your own sneaker at some point? Mm. We we do. I'm gonna say that me and my business partner, we've been talking about this for so long. Think about it. It's talking about creating the shoe. That's that right now. That's that's for you know a few years out from right now. Mm-hmm. But we we actually have um, some actual like sweatsuits coming out. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Like tapered at the bottom. You know, uh, right now the the um, the demo. Well, not the demo, but the the first product that we're gonna have out is you know it's it's gonna say SPX right here at first, but that's what we're gonna model first to see what people like. And we're gonna get ideas and everything from different people to actually come that's up dope. with the first line yeah, sure. product of the SPX. Uh, okay. so, be on the lookout for SPX clothing, buy some shoes from my guys, <laughs> check them out. For sure, for sure. And without further ado, we'll see you guys next time. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. Peace. <laughs> If you would like to see more of us, please click the link in our bio. Visit our YouTube channel. He said, don't you know you my seed? Just look inside yourself and you got all that you need. Yeah, I see that you've been working and you got to believe. Yeah, I see that you've been working and you got to believe. But they can never. I know they want it. And they ain't going to try to. But they can never I say they can never I know they wanna And they gon' try to But they can never I said take it away, take it away, take it away